I'm with McNeil Pediatrics, and my company makes a drug called Concerta for ADHD. I didn't come here to talk about my drug, though. I came here to talk about ADHD, because that's really why we're in this part of social media. ADHD affects about 5 million children in the United States. And uh, take a look around the room, about 1 in 20 adults. There's no such thing as adult onset ADHD. And there's a high, high degree of inheritability. So there are families out there that are impacted this, impacted by this disease in many different ways. And what my company wanted to do two years ago was they wanted to be able to serve these patients and even people that weren't our customers, but we wanted to go to their comfort zone. We wanted to take the resources that we had on our websites that people could go to other websites, but we wanted to put it in a different area. So I'm going to take you on a little trip to uh, two years ago. We're going to see where we started, where we moved to. Right now, we've got about 20,000 fans combined. And uh, in two years, getting to there, we started in a place that I like to call 2.no. It's a place that is well-intentioned, but not very evolved. Um, but it, it's not a place where you have to stay if you do it the right way. I've got to have a couple of little steps that have demonstrated to my company that this is a risk that we can bear. Um, and before I get into that case study, I want to share with you two slides to warn you, though. These slides have been known to, um, when I've shown them to some marketing folks, they have self-combusted. So I'm just going <laughs> to, we're going to move through them very quickly, but there's a consent and release form <laughs> on your table so you can sign it. We begin by defining what social media isn't, specifically when my brand team wants to go to the bright, shiny object. Because you just don't go there to go there. You just don't go there for this year's goals and objectives. This makes people cry. <laughs> this makes them afraid. The founder of Wikipedia said that what Wikipedia does, it democratizes information. And that is the beauty of 2.0. And when I try to explain how it's not a website, those are the three things that I believe really differentiate social media from what our colleagues are used to. And in terms of the ROI, because we always are going to get that question. What's really important for marketing people to understand in unbranded social media, not about the product, about the patient, is you're there to serve the patient need. And the patient is not a market share point. The patient is not a customer. Patients are actually people. And people are people first. They're patients second. They're communities third. And if you, if you do it right, if you earn their trust, Fourth, maybe they're going to be a customer. And you've got to start. And if your brand team is ready for unbranded social media, and this is how they value their investment, then you can take the next step. So now we'll go into our case study. I usually lose about half my audience at this point, so thanks for sticking around. Um, this is how we launched. If, if you look at that, it's, it's pretty much a static web page. Again, launched in the, the era of 2.0 when I had no interactivity, uh, technically, because there was no guidelines. My, my company was concurrently corporate, J&J &J Corporate was concurrently developing social media guidelines as I was developing this, but there was nothing for me to cling to. So we turned off all the functionality, and um, it wasn't 2.0. Um, but before we could launch it, you have to make sure that you do your math. It's the social media math you have to be sure that there's a need, and you've got to be able to go to regulatory, legal, brand, advocacy, and show them the numbers are there, the need is there, we need to be there. Once you've got them that far, then you need to explain, here's what it's going to take for us to get there as a company. And you've got to do a risk-benefit analysis. You just, you shouldn't allow anyone to feel like they could go into social media without really doing this due diligence up front. And I've talked people out of social media programs because the people weren't driving the growth there because there wasn't a patient need. ADHD is one of the most researched topics in, in, on the internet. 
So the math was right for us, but it's not right for everybody. When we launched Moms, we were lucky enough to have, our, our model was community leaders. So if you remember the, the graphic, our name was on there for transparency, but it's not our voice. The voices are the Mombassadors, the leaders of our community, and we chose people that um, had experience, they were bloggers, Debbie Phelps was, uh, wanted a voice in this community, and we were lucky enough to get her right before the Olympics, at those pre-Olympic rates. Um, we made sure that when we launched it, that we didn't say it was 2.0, but fans could connect with other fans and go and talk on their pages. So it, it wasn't like their Facebook page, but it was the first time when our research was telling us these moms feel isolated. Because they say ADHD, they make it the raised eyebrow from the other moms in the neighborhood. We know that they were going to WebMD at 11 o'clock at night, which is fine, but where could they go to feel like they were with people like them? And so our communities were like that. The topics were guided by the market research that we did that we know these moms are thinking about. It's October report card season. What happens when school lets out, my kid's unstructured? Back to school, what's gonna happen? All throughout the year, we know these moms are thinking about different things. Our topics aligned with that, and it was the voices of our community leaders that provided different perspectives on all of that. So it was never our voice, and I was listening to my colleague Rob. Rob engages in a dialogue. With our communities, it's more about the fans talking to each other and sharing those insights with the community leaders. The one thing we did have when we launched were the instant polls, and that was the only thing that gave people a sense. You take it, you immediately see where you fall in that pie, which is kind of nice. These polls are so, uh, they're, they're very, very popular. The brand team actually liked them so much they adopted them and put them on their branded product site because it's a really interesting way to kind of take the pulse of the people that you're engaging with. 